Ciao, jewelry making friends. This is my second video with the May edition of the Potomac Beads Whispers of Antiquity treasure box. I love this box. It is so amazing. They did such a great job with it. I can link my first video. I did an unboxing and then I was trying to put the beads away and clean up my mat, but the beads were just screaming at me. So I ended up making a really fast but stunning pair of earrings. They're still here on my work table. It's so cool. This box came with these lever back ear wires with the blank setting and a couple of these gorgeous crystals, the Chaton crystals to set inside and just close the prongs. And I did these really quick, but really lovely drops. And voila, this is a fabulous, really fast, really easy pair of earrings. So I'm going to set those aside and I have already kind of worked out my next project. I decided to kind of stick with the classic pearl and jet black and crystal but you know i i want to make this a little bit updated 2024 pearls are really in style really on trend again and for me they never really go out of style but i wanted to make this classic but a little bit contemporary and even edgy at the same time so i'll tell you what i have done along with these beautiful crystals and these jet black bicone beads that came in the box and these really gorgeous seed beads i've gone into my supplies and pulled out some black enamel chain and some gold filled spacer beads and let's see, I also found these little cone shaped bead caps. And uh, let me move a couple of things. And I am a clearance shopper. And so I'm just going to share this with you. This is a craft store item. I got this for a dollar. And you know, I'm always looking, tarnish is the bane of my existence. So I'm always looking for things that are really beautiful, that will not tarnish, that will wear well. And I have not used this little craft store item yet. And I think it is perfect with the gold and the pearl and the crystal. So I have a little length of this. And this is the mechanics of this necklace are going to be a little bit unusual. Um, I'm going to move just a couple things out of the way before I tell you that. So I, this is one of my little sample components with the pearl, some 20 gauge gold wire and these little spacer beads. And those are going to kind of customize this black chain. When we get to that part, I'll show you <laughs> what that's all about. So the way I'm going to start this piece, I took just a little length of the 20 gauge wire that I'm going to use for my components and just put a simple loop on it. I love my one step looper for that. And I took the bead stringing wire that we received in last month's Potomac treasure box, show you for those of you who don't get the box and might be interested in it. It is a flexible seven strand nylon coated wire and it is really wonderful for being seven strand. It is quite flexible. I really liked it. And um, I just connected, I made a simple loop and I did double crimps and they're just flat crimps because this is going to disappear inside this cone. So it only has to be functional, not beautiful. And so I have my one side started and I will show you exactly what I did when we get to the other side. And before I start my stringing pattern, the first thing I wanna do is thread on the bead cap so you'll be able to see that that loop and those crimps just hide right inside the bead cap. But in order for me to know where my loop and my crimps on this side need to be, I'm going to just take a little Sharpie marker and I'm going to make a little tiny mark at this space right here. And that way I know, let me get this little mark more visible. And that way I know, in fact, let me see. I'm gonna make my, when I finish stringing, I'll make my loop and crimp on this end. 
and I'll know that that is how much space I need to leave blank for inside the cone for this side of my little focal section of my necklace. So there is that and I'm going to go ahead and thread on, um, do I want to thread this on now? I think I'm going to wait until the end to thread that on just so that everything is visible for my stringing because my last bead, like my bead needs to stop right there and I need to do the same thing on the other side. And also I've done a little test here and I first started stringing the components that I made right onto the bead stringing wire and I just did not like the way it hung at all and as with most things a jump ring can really give you the movement and the flexibility that you need in a piece. So I tested a little jump ring on one of my components and it worked really well and these are really simple components. I finished them all because it was so late last night I finished all of them but it is very simple. I used the wonderful Athena cast. I was looking for the package here. Here it is. I use the wonderful Athena cast two inch head pins. They are 29 karat gold plated and I just love these little ball head pins. It's such a high quality plating and I just think that little dot of gold at the end of a component is lovely. And all I did is take those head pins and create these little patterns, just stacking them on and did a simple loop at the top. And I like my one step looper for that, but you can easily do it with your pliers. If you don't have the one step looper or if you hate it, <laughs> some people just don't like that tool. So I did it that way. And then I have some jump rings that are, um, uh, that I made out of the same 20 gauge wire that I'm using in the rest of the piece. And so before I start stringing, I am simply going to add a jump ring to each, the top of each one of these components. So it's ready to string right onto my bead stringing wire when I get going on my pattern. So I just want to make sure that each one is closed perfectly well because the seven strand beading wire is pretty small and I want to make sure that it doesn't, one of my drops doesn't fall off onto the floor. So I'm just going to do that to all five. Okay, now I can start my little bit my stringing pattern and the first thing I'm going to do is a pearl and I just loved these beautiful seed beads that came in this month's box they are root beer lined and it's a light topaz with the AB the Aurora Borealis finish on them and they are just stunning as spacers as you might have noticed in my earrings they just look like so much more in between these pearls and even in between the jet black beads they just look like so much more than a little glass seed bead and i have to apologize i am really not sure if my microphone is picking up some of the noise but i am really fortunate to be having some work done in my walk-in closet with um the rollout trays for my jewelry trays and I actually this morning did a before picture uh, and then you know I'm going to do a video and do some after so you can see how I'm organizing my jewelry trays for all of my handmade jewelry so you may hear the saw and the, some of the construction noise <laughs> a little bit in the background and it's a really windy day here in Florida so you may even hear my wind chimes outside but um, I really wanted to make this necklace. <laughs> These beads were sort of keeping me awake last night. So let me stop talking and show you kind of my pattern here. And you can see how nicely the jump rings make things dangle. So I am just putting a seed bead in between each one of these pearls, except for where the jump ring will be like the little gold, almost a gold spacer in between. And I just found that I like the way they hang with two pearls in between each of my downward components. 
So let me just finish stringing this to the end and I will show you how I am planning to put those cones over the ends and then transition into my beautiful black chain. And I also am going to modify that chain too, so I won't be totally done <laughs> with <laughs> once I get to there. Um, but the cool thing about the chain is that the links are not solid, and so I have already been able to open them, and so that means I don't have to waste any links, and it just makes it really nice for modifications because I'm going to add in some of these gold and pearl components that I made. So it's a really easy technique but it just looks great and it looks like anything but a craft store chain when you make those little upgrades so I'll show you what my plan is and I'm finishing off my pattern with a pearl because these six millimeter pearls fit perfectly inside the opening of that cone construction interruptions <laughs> I'm sorry for that um, so what I've done is I measured there is literally a quarter of an inch almost a perfect quarter of an inch from the bottom of this crimp to that little mark that I made on my wire so to make this easier I'm going to clamp off this side of my necklace and go ahead and wire wrap this side so that way I will I think I'll have an easier time closing off the other end here so I just pull this up and I have to decide if I want to put a pearl here and I think I do I have my I have my little strand of pearls here in my dish and I think I do want a pearl on the top of this before I do my my loop Yeah, I think that will be really pretty. And then a loop and then my chain. So I think that's going to be just what I want to do. So I'm going to bend my wire and I am going to do a wire wrapped loop here. Do my round chain nose pliers. Not too big. I'll go right about there because I want the loop to be consistent in scale with the loops on my chain that will be added to it. So I'm just going to make this loop. I like to kind of turn this back so my loop is centered a little bit and hold on to the loop with my bent chain nose pliers and I'm just going to wrap right down to that pearl. Very pretty. Tuck that in. Actually, it doesn't need to go in the scrap bag because I think I want to make at least three more of these components to kind of um, customize my chain. And I use my one and a half millimeter one step looper just to get a fast loop. And I'll warm and straighten this wire. I cut a little extra length because I have a couple of components to make with it. And I do want to make sure that this is closed really well because I am going to attach it to the loop on this end and again that seven strand beading wire can be you know thin and I don't want it to slip through the loop. So what I'm going to do is take, I put two crimp beads, these are not crimp tubes for those of you who are newer. And I did two just for security, as I said, and as you see on this end, uh, the, the mechanics of this, just they just disappear inside that cone. It's my other little one. So I'm just going to put two crimp beads on this bead stringing wire and make a loop and pull that wire back down through both of those crimp beads and I need to 
have a quarter of an inch from the bottom of my crimp beads to that pearl so that my cone will slip right over the edge. Let me push this down and I'm just going to bring my, my ruler in here and from the pearl to right there, grab my pen again, from the pearl to So I'm just going to push my beads right down to that mark and make my loops about, you know, I know how about how, how big I made it on the other side. Right about there. And then a flat crimp is super easy. You just flatten it <laughs> with your pliers. Just pinch it closed. super easy and I can cut this little end away and open this loop and just thread that right on there and I cut way too much wire so let me make that more manageable I do that because I really don't want to run out of wire, but that was a little bit overkill. And that is perfection. So I just repeat the same thing that I did on this side. Have a little look. Everything is moving so beautifully. And I'm just going to repeat the same I'm thing. I'm going to try to get three wraps the same as the other side. Looks like I'm able to do that. So always cut, tuck your cut end, and I just want to lay this out and see if I need to turn my, like adjust my loops a little bit, which I can always do also after I attach the chain. That is beautiful. And so now I'm going to open, let me find the middle of this chain. And a little trick for that is so that you don't have to count links is to put your chain on a little piece of wire and looks like this is about the middle. I got even links on both sides. So I'm going to open this one. nice strong chain too but I want to be careful not to mar the coating on it but it's so far this is really really nice chain so with this one open I'm going to go ahead and attach it to this side and sometimes let's see Sometimes when I am working with any kind of coated jump rings or lobster clasps, I will use my nylon jaw pliers if I can get a good enough grip just to do what I need to do without marking it. Let's see, it looks pretty good. Give it a little squeeze. And so, look at that. That is so cool. I, for me, this is unexpected, but it's really cool. I love, I mean, what is more classic than black? <laughs> like, and this is a little bit of a glossy black, like a black enamel, pearl, and gold. So gorgeous. I'm gonna end up 
I don't know if I'm going to need any more seed beads. Put them in the dish. Close my link again. How beautiful. So now I just have to make, I'm going to make three more of these little components. And for those, I used my two and a quarter millimeter one step looper. I just really love this tool when I have to make a lot of components because it saves my hand from an arthritis flare up. But if you don't have this tool or you hate it, because I hear people either love it or hate it, then you can uh, totally make your simple loops with your pliers. That works too. And if I just have a couple to make, I'll use my pliers sometimes too. And then I'm going to recreate this by threading on one of my, I think these are five millimeter gold spacer beads. And this is an Amazon product that had really great reviews. It is supposed to be gold filled. And some of the reviewers said that they wore it in the shower, that they made jewelry for their Etsy shops, and it was really great. Um, I question it, what if it actually is gold filled. I, I'm not sure. I hope it doesn't tarnish, but I can link it below. I'm always trying to find findings and things that are higher quality than just base metal fashion jewelry. Mm -hmm. So this component was really simple. A gold bead, a pearl, a gold bead, and another simple loop on this end. And I just have the habit of doing my loops opposite, so I'm going to turn the opening downward and get my gold bead right up to the jaw of the plier, close it slightly, and it makes the cut. Pull it back from the jaw of the plier. If I need to line up my loops at this point, I can, but they look really good to me. And I don't even realize, I would want to close it a little bit, but honestly, I'm going to open and close these again anyway, because I'm going to add them into my chain. And I just need to do at least two more like that. If I decide that I want to do three, I'm planning to do two on each side of my chain and I'll see how that looks. I can always go back and add another one if I need to. all of my little components are made. The one step looper does a nice blunt cut. It's a step you can skip with your pliers and that is all the waste you have from your little components is that little tiny bit of wire. So now I will need to count. I think I might be done with these. I will need to count my links now because I want to do two on each each side of my chain. So let me see where I want the first one. Let's do one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm going to open the seventh one. Let's see. Um, yeah, op I'll open the seventh one. is a nice strong chain. I am there, I got it. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and the seventh one, and add in my pearl and gold component. Close that again, and now this time, since this loop is a little bit easier to open, I'll open my simple loop and add my chain. And 
and I want to do the same thing on this side. One, two, three, Add four, five, component. six. Let's open this seventh one. is so beautiful I'm loving it it's so different and so unexpected and a little bit edgy but really I just love this idea one, two, three, four, five, seven so I'm going to do the same thing here one two three four five six seven to open my seventh link there is no science to why I chose seven just I I like odd numbers it's from my years of interior design and I I am um, whoops I like um, to just kind of see where where my component is going to lay and whatever that spot is and <laughs> that's the sweet spot that is so beautiful and I'm just going to repeat the same thing on this side one two three four five six seven Okay, this is looking great. And so now I have to just simply put on my clasp. And as I told you, I saved out my last crystal in the box. I used another one of those little ball head pins that I used on my components down here. And let's see, I think I am done with my pearls and this little dish. And I have a few little black enamel findings in here so i have a few jump rings i have this larger one that my lobster claw can clasp onto and i have um, a black enamel lobster claw clasp and i'm going to make this little dangle i think and attach it with a gold jump ring so i'll have the gold on the black and there's no front or back to this so to finish this off i can really just add this on any side and I think I will I know that these jump rings these larger ones are a little tough to close because I've worked with them before so I'm going to use my nylon jaw plier be really careful not to make a mark on it that looks great and then I have these little daintier ones for the other side for my lobster claw clasp. And let's see. Close that really well. Okay. And now I am just going to, I was just playing, I actually had rescued this little ball head pin from something I had to cut apart and so I just threaded that on and bent that in half where it's coming out of the bead and I'm just going to roll this back into a little simple loop and very pretty and I'm going to get one of the jump rings that I made out of the 20 gauge wire I make my jump rings out of the same wire that's in a project and then um, I put them in a little bag and store them with the wire. So I always know when I see <laughs> these rings, I always know what wire it's made out of and you know if it's anti-tarnish or like if it's bare copper or whatever it is and that works really well for me. These two together. And so I am just going to attach this right here on my lobster claw clasp just for a lovely little detail on the back of my necklace.
How pretty is that? This is so stunning. It's so unusual and so unexpected. This looks very couture, very elegant. I mean, you just cannot go wrong with gold, black enamel, and pearl. I mean, this is just a really stunning necklace. I just love the way the black enamel transitions into the gold and pearl component and then back down into this gold cone and this is just absolutely beautiful the little focal section is movable and dangly and it is just i'm mean, stunning i really love this i will definitely put some pictures on gabriella eva but before i do anything else i always brush like any kind of base metal like these little cone bead caps with my Permalac anti-tarnish coating. It is the most fabulous thing. It dries super quick and you just brush it on um, this bottle. I have a new bottle, but I want to use this one up, but you just brush it on like that on anything that is like um, base metal or, you know, just fashion jewelry and it dries really quickly and you don't even need a second coat. And honestly, if you like accidentally touch one of your beads with the brush, it doesn't do anything because it dries totally clear. And it's a detail, but I really like to, if I keep a piece or gift it, I really like to do this to add longevity to my pieces and so that you know people can wear them and enjoy them and so it's like that simple it will take a couple of minutes to dry but i i usually do this i most of the time i do it off camera but it is um just something that i tend to do to give you know a long life to fashion jewelry and you know a lot of the stylists will tell you that fashion jewelry is only meant to last one season but that is not acceptable to me so i do whatever i can to raise my quality and this little inexpensive coating just does the trick and so i can link this in the description box below the video and you know it's something that i just keep on the edge of my work table and just make sure that I have brushed a nice little coating onto everything and that is done. So I'm going to just set this aside to dry for just a few minutes and then I will put her put this on my Gabriella Eva dress form and take some pictures and I thank you all so much for watching. I will put the information for the Potomac Beads monthly box subscriptions in the description box of this video and if you're interested you can use my link and go right there and check that out and if you have not subscribed to my channel it would be a lovely way to support my work and i would still love to have your pet photos any of your little furry face supervisors around your work tables you can email those to me thanks a lot for watching everybody i hope you're all safe and well and having fun on your beading mats child jewelry making friends